Hello dear learners today we are going to discuss few of the mcqs from social pharmacy which was earlier known as health education and community pharmacy that is hcp we are going to discuss the mcqs from the topic communicable diseases and part 6 so earlier five parts contain few of the mcqs on the introductory part as well as respiratory tract infections so in part 6 we are going to talk about some arthropod bone infections so to start with part 6 sorry part 6 we are going to talk about arthropod bone so to start with part 6 the first question is plague is transmitted through whether the plague the which is an arthropod bone disease is transmitted through mosquito rat fleas worms or all of them the correct answer is it is rat fleas so plague as you all know uh, here this one you can see this is the rat flea okay which feed on the rats and from here this infected fleas whens the host that is this one rat or the infected rodent dies then they search for the healthy rats or even if the host is not found then they in turn infect the humans so as you can see here these terms in zoonotic epizoonotic so the plague which is an arthropod bone infection like it is enzootic as you can see here this is one is the enzootic cycle that is it is something which is belonging to so this belongs to like this rat fleas which are feeding on the rats and epizootic as you can see here epizootic is nothing but it is widespread in some population like these are the infected mammals through rat fleas so epizootic is nothing but it's an epidemic which is infecting the large number of people so there are various forms of plagues also are there which are infecting the humans so the correct answer is it is rat fleas as you can see here in the diagram see this portion here the this region yersinia pestis which is the causative agent which is the infectious agent for the plague which is getting mixed over here with the blood and when this rat fleas infect the humans they regurgitate the bacteria along with the blood into the humans next question is malaria is transmitted through dash whether it is female anopheles mosquito whether it is rat fleas worms or all of them the correct answer is it is female anopheles mosquito as you all might be knowing which is a very common disease is malaria so what happens in this case this female anopheles mosquito is responsible for transmitting this malaria and the species are various species plasmodium species like plasmodium vivax plasmodium falciparum plasmodium para falciparum okay plasmodium malariae ovale etc all are the species of plasmodium like all are the species of plasmodium like female anopheles mosquito as you can see here in the picture this is uh, the basic uh, segment of the mosquito body segment here these are various forms of malarial parasite trophozoic form schizons merozoites okay so this are uh, all are forms from like which you all know we have also one video like a life cycle of malarial parasite which is there in the trick to remember the classification of anti malarial drug so you can go through that for all these forms also and this is the basic uh, like what you can say this is the basic uh, thing wherein as you can see the structure these are the antennas okay this is nothing but proboscis and stylet so antennas are nothing but they are sensing the movements of the victim and like the face of the mosquito are having two prominent notable things like this one is stylet 
and the proboscis proboscis is nothing but it is a as you can see here it is a tube like structure uh, connected to the face of the mouth which is responsible for sucking the blood from the victim like from the human host and this stylate is nothing but it's a sharp needle which is used to pierce the skin and during this process of piercing the skin the plasmodium is injected into the victim next question is natural reservoirs for the plague are the options are wild rodents insects worms or none of them so as we have seen earlier it is transmitted through rat fleas and the host are nothing but they are like uh, rodents so here you can see these are the wild rodents the correct answer is wild rodents natural reservoirs and as you can see here in the image reservoirs for the infection are various rodents like mice are there okay gerbils are there skunks are there so these are all animals all rodents which are responsible for uh, acting as a uh, or they are reservoirs of the plague but in india generally as you can see here the wild rodents it is in rats next question is different forms of plagues are whether it is bubonic plague septicemic plague pneumonic plague or all of them so the forms of uh, plague as you can see here uh, these are the various forms bubonic septicemic pneumonic so the correct answer is it is all of the above all are the forms of plague bubonic plague septicemic plague and pneumonic plague so as this word suggest bubonic is nothing but buboz buboz is nothing but the lymph node ka swelling okay so swelled lymph nodes are called as buboz so it is bubonic plague which is confined to the lymph nodes and septicemic plague which is confined to the circulation okay Now, like uh, blood may jab infection hota hai then next is pneumonic plague which is confined to the lungs because the infection is there in lungs so the name is pneumonic plague the correct answer is all of the above as you can see these are the forms this is bubonic which is nothing but lymphatic system okay septicemic which deals with the circulatory system and pneumonic which deals with the lungs so these are the names of various forms of plague next question is most common form of plague amongst the given type is whether it is bubonic plague septicemic plague pneumonic plague or none of the above the correct answer is it is bubonic plague most common form of plague amongst the given form is bubonic out of bubonic septicemic and pneumonic plague amongst the given plague forms droplet infection is possible in which of the form whether it's bubonic plague septicemic plague pneumonic plague or none of the above the correct answer is it is pneumonic plague as you can see in case of pneumonic plague since it is transmitted through means pneumonic is confined to the lungs so as you can see it, it spreads through the droplets so droplet infection is possible in pneumonic plague and it spreads faster since the droplet infection is possible compared to the bubonic and septicemic plague so the next question is amongst the given plague forms highly contagious form of plague is whether it is bubonic septicemic pneumonic or none of the above the correct answer is it is pneumonic plague since the droplet infection is possible in pneumonic plague and it spreads faster so it is highly contagious form amongst the all forms of plague next question is entry of yersinia pestis from infected lymph node to the blood vessel leads to which form of the plague like since there are swellings at your lymph nodes or lymph glands you can call so that swellings uh, are nothing but bubos so that is bubonic form okay and when this yersinia pestis uh, from infected lymph all these bubos it is 
uh, it is passing to the blood so this form is converted to which whether it is bubonic septicemic pneumonic or none of the above the correct answer is it is septicemic plague which is nothing but it is passing to the blood circulatory system so as you can see here the picture septicemic plague okay next question is enlargement of lymph gland due to infection by yersinia pestis leads to whether bubonic plague septicemic plague pneumonic plague or none of the above the correct answer is it is bubonic plague lymph glands ka infection as we just now discussed twice or twice like buboes they are called as so it is like looking like this see as you can see here this is the swelling of the lymph node okay these are buboes and bubonic plague since buboes are formed which is nothing but swelling of lymph node or also called as lymph gland so the form is bubonic and the glands like buboes so in case of buboes these are found uh, generally buboes are found in which areas see they are found in armpit okay then groin region neck region and to the site of initial infection like close to the site of initial infection groin area is nothing but uh, your uh, the groin area is nothing but it is the area where the abdomen ends and the leg starts so it is generally above thighs and below abdomen this part is nothing but groin part so in that area armpit neck okay it will occur and wherever the initial infection had taken place like if it is in the armpit so nearby areas it will affect if it is in groin area so again it will affect the nearby areas like that so with this we finish with few of the mcqs from part 6 stay tuned for the continuation part of communicable diseases part 7 and further parts thank you